the interruption, I would now like to introduce our keynote speaker, Mr. Amit Kumar, CEO OLX Auto to all of you. Mr. Amit Kumar is a seasoned business leader, a consumer internet champion, and a community volunteer in developing countries of Asia and Africa. He has created digital platforms and businesses which have empowered SMEs across Asia, Africa, and Eastern Europe to grow their businesses and create employment opportunities and prosperity. Currently, he is the CEO at OLX Autos India. He has built this digital used automotive business in the last 2.5 years to almost a $100 million turnover business spread across India. Earlier, as managing director, he built an e-commerce portal in 35 emerging countries of Africa, Asia, and Eastern Europe, which was an online marketplace open to all individuals and suppliers willing to sell online. From students to small retail shop owners, this online e-commerce portal, Kaimu, gave birth to successful e-commerce entrepreneurs. Globally, it educated over 2 lakh suppliers, creating at least 5,000 new jobs in countries such as Nigeria, Bangladesh, and Nepal, etc. It was later merged with Jumia.com and listed on New York Stock Exchange. Amit is one of the select candidates chosen by esteemed Stanford University's Stanford Institute for Innovation in Developing Economies as a consultant to help entrepreneurs and business owners in Africa and Asia in growing their business. It is indeed a matter of privilege and pleasure for us to have Mr. Amit Ji with us here today. I would request Mr. Amit to address the participants. I request you, uh, Amit Ji. Can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Shikhaji. Thank you very much, uh, uh, the institution, for, for inviting me. Uh, it is indeed a great pleasure. Uh, Maybe we should do first a customary sound and video check. I hope I am audible. I hope you can see me. Absolutely. Uh, cool. Thank you. Uh, I think it's it's indeed a, a great opportunity and a, a pleasure to be here. Uh, the esteemed guests here and what I love is 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 talking to uh, students. I have myself and all of us have been students in past, and we've learned a lot from interactions like this. Uh, and I think the, the great thing uh, uh, about technology and disruption is that it has become so much more convenient. And, and I can see that around 366 participants. I'm super proud of, of how technology has really simplified life. The Saraswati Vandana that we did was a virtual Saraswati Vandana. And in two and a half years ago, none of us would have even conceived or thought of doing that. And today we were all happy and maybe praying to Mata Saraswati uh, in, in, in our minds. So super happy and, and super uh, uh, proud of where we are. Uh, now coming back to uh, uh, the, the subject of discussion, and that to me is also at, a, at the very heart, a disruptive matter. And let me, let me begin with, with a, uh, a story and some of the elder participants uh, in, in, in the group might be able to relate more to it. All of us would have seen the journey of men walking to men cycling to uh, petrol or or uh, diesel driven bikes then cars then railways then then aeroplanes and if some of us have seen some old hindi movies at some point in time those movies actually showed the tussle or friction between a cycle rickshaw a hero driving a cycle rickshaw and in my memory it is dilip kumar and then there is suddenly a, a villain who comes in with the car and so many more resources, takes away the business. Uh, and I think the gig economy is this only. And, and here the reality is that the upcoming new technology is not the villain. That is the hero because that creates more opportunities for us, for organizations, for institutions, and in general, a free market. Now, let, let, let me sort of share my screen and I had created a quick slide deck. Uh, let me let me see if, if, if uh, all of you can, can see it. Is my screen visible? Yes, Amitji, it is visible. Fantastic. Uh, so you, you've given a, a very detailed introduction to me, so I'll, I'll skip this slide and then quickly move to... Uh, to this this image and uh, uh, 
share with you what does actually this the, the keywords on on the screen mean they they the big ones that are getting highlighted here are temporary workers jobs ambiguous independent mobile app and and when you take away or give the shaded part here that's exactly what gig economy is gig economy is about having workers who can do temporary jobs at their freedom they can do piece works they can do it through mobile phones they can be independent and that's exactly what our aspirational india is at some level gig economy is powering us to the future and there are two sides of the gig economy one side of the gig economy is the organization which is either enabling or getting disrupted because of the gig economy and the second side of the gig economy is people who are using these platforms mobile apps to do more do from where they can or to do what they wanted or like to and here i would i would take my story uh, a bit ahead uh, i am where i am uh, thanks to thanks to the country for providing the infrastructure education opportunities that that it has but where does my journey go ahead from here i can build bigger organizations i can do bigger global geographical roles but yesterday when in the evening uh, i was playing badminton and i was playing this with an ex entrepreneur who had tried and not really succeeded in building a large insurance uh, app and what he was saying i am now 52 today and my future is consulting there are a lot of people who are willing to benefit from the knowledge that i have and that's enough for me to to suffice my needs and that's also gig economy at play right that's exactly what gig economy is and that's exactly what gig economy enables for us now the topic uh, of of uh, this this seminar is more pivoted towards how do businesses respond to this change how do businesses survive and become better at doing what they do and that that's what takes me to the next slide that i have i hope the content on the slide is visible or readable if it is not i can blow it up it is readable uh, but if it can be a little larger then i think the visibility will be better is is this better um i think no. the earlier let, let me let me try it again let me try it sure, again sure 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 hopefully this is better yes this one is better fantastic i think there are multiple definitions of of gig economy uh, lying around uh, to to simplify gig economy uh, the way i look at it when as an organization i am willing to have people who are not bound by full time contracts then i am participating in gig economy and people who are participating on the other side are also the suppliers to me now that interpretation is is loose in some sense uber is a sort of a uh, leading example of what gig economy is but you could argue that airbnb is also gig economy uh, alibaba group suppliers are not bound by a contract to say okay you have to sell on alibaba group for the next 100 years it's their choice in fact the interesting example and and it pushed me to think a bit more facebook content creation content on facebook all of us are on facebook this event is being live streamed on facebook in a way we by the virtue of being a participant to this event are also powering gig economy and and so on and so forth if i sort of simplify it why does gig economy work because it's efficient we are saving money and time and even if we are not saving money and time we are organizing ourselves in our non productive times to deliver more value on the other side what's the what are the flip sides of 
gig economy and this is where the point around the resilience of the organizations will come in speed versus result and here i would want to bring in a lot of a bit of cultural context japanese organizations per se are seen more traditional in nature less freedom driving so people who join a large japanese conglomerate expect to retire out. sorry uh, is there a question okay uh, and that that's a sort of fixed contract between the japanese conglomerates and the employees and it's it's a long tradition which has been out there now if i look at why not or issues around gig economy while you get speed but are you getting the result that you would get if you had a fixed contract with your employee and here i will bring in a more closer to home context all of us would know meru cabs uh, which which used to operate it, its own cabs and then it got disrupted by ola and uber now have ola and uber been able to deliver uh, the same quality consistency as meru the answer is not very clear but the clear answer is because of the benefits that meru and uber got which are the cost and time they were able to really disrupt meru if i look at control yes of course ola and uber's biggest problem and you go and do look at it at a city level their basic problem is that they don't have enough supply because they don't control their so called and employees is not the right word their supply the people who are driving their cabs and the physical asset of cab is not being controlled by ola and uber and then comes in the question of compliances to me this is a transitory question when there were only people walking on the roads and there were cycles the legal authorities the government or the regulatory framework did not know how to regulate a faster moving mobile mobike or moped or a car because that was disrupting the traffic and then over a period of time laws came in which said okay there have to be traffic signals otherwise there is chaos i think the compliance problem is the same when we look at let's say the drones being questioned how should they operate and it is the same question around the gig economy over a period of time we will have the right answers to to sort of move before i move forward of this slide i think the big take away that i want this group to have is why not of gig economy has the answers for businesses companies on how to leverage it better they will have to build frameworks and and we as olx and a lot of companies these days hire consultants we need to build frameworks which allow us to manage the flexibility the speed and result or the outcome the control piece is getting disrupted globally to give you an example my my brother uh, who's who's currently in, in the us and there there is a concept of what is called at will contracts and what does that mean the organization has the has the choice to say tomorrow we don't need you and the same choice is there with the employee also so in principle it's a if i have a, a a a spectrum this is closer to the gig economy than the 90 day notice period or the 30 day notice period that is typically seen in the indian context and the labor markets are getting freer uh, companies are getting freedom with the startups and the disruption and the employees are also getting greater choice and they they are we are moving faster so i think gig economy per se is also a spectrum of things uh, around at which point do we calibrate ourselves before moving to the next slide i'll do a quick time check uh, shikha ji how much how much time do i have uh, so 20 minutes is allocated i think 10 minutes are still left okay thank you thank you very much 
uh, again, this is a busy slide, but I liked it because it gave a, a very thorough and detailed view of where all <laughs> is the gig economy really is 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 the is the, is the gig economy really uh, moving in and and some of the familiar examples actually reside on 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 the bottom left of the slide where you have fever upwork. And then uh, on the top right, you have the poster childs of gig economy, which are Uber, Lyft. But I think this, this ecosystem disruption is happening across categories. I mean, look at what is proofreading. And proofreading is being disrupted by gig economy. You can get your blogs written by gig economy. You can go to Fiverr, ask people, pay them two rupees a word, three rupees a word. And they will they will do what what is expected. I think in general, what needs to be understood and agreed upon, because of the freedom that comes in, because of the flexibility that comes in, over a period of time, organizations need to build in mechanisms which allow them to participate in gig economy rather than saying, "Okay, we cannot do this." And, and that's, that's to my mind, it is better to disrupt yourself rather than be disrupted. And given that all of you are MBA students, you would all know about how Gillette keeps on dif disrupting itself. And, and there is a sort of simpler example. And I come in from the autos industry. Toyota used to have a car called Polis, and it was a fantastic top selling model. And that Qualys was overnight moved to Innova. And that became an even better, bigger, top-selling car. And that, that core disrupt or get disrupted philosophy applies to many more industries in future. And I, I thought it would be good for sort of all of you to get a flavor because all of you will, will eventually either become entrepreneurs or participate in some way. In, in different industries. And when I was reading around for, for, for my talk, the biggest surprise that came to my mind, and I am a chemical engineer personally, oil and gas industry, it's a maybe 200 years old or 150 years old industry. That industry is getting disrupted by gig economy. Oil and gas industry has a lot of contracting and subcontracting. But the next level is gig economy. Today, I am the right person for working here or the asset that is at the right place. And tomorrow it could be somewhere else. I think media and creative industry per se, to me, has been a participant in the gig economy for a very long time. I mean, if you look at or think about how a movie gets made, that's a celebration of gig economy all around from the director coming in to the hero coming in to the uh, location to the sound and the whole thing it's all gig economy in front of us a lot of other industries partly on the way to getting disrupted education a lot of i'm not sure how how your institution works but a lot of and, and i came from isb a lot of universities now get top notch professors because those professors are open, part of gig economy, and are helping more students than they ever could in the pre-virtual era. So to simplify and summarize for us, a big change is a big chance, and gig economy is the disruptor for all of us as employees, as part of organizations that we will be. It is better to embrace than get disrupted. And that is where uh, I would I would uh, end my uh, uh, talk. Uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, on uh, 